25 and a quarter years ago, I read a newspaper article which said that one day uh, syringes would be one of the major causes of the spread of AIDS, the transmission of AIDS. I thought this was unacceptable, so I decided to do something about it. Sadly, it's come true. Malaria, as we all know, kills approximately one million people a year. The reuse of syringes now exceeds that and kills 1.3 million people a year. This young girl and her friend that I met in an orphanage in Delhi were HIV positive from a syringe. And what was so sad about this particular story was that uh, that once their parents had found out, and don't forget their parents took them to the doctor, the parents threw them out on the street, and hence they ended up in an orphanage. And it comes from situations like this where you have either skilled or unskilled practitioners blindly giving an injection to someone, and the injection is so valuable that the people uh, basically trust the doctor being second to God, which I've heard many times to do the right thing, but in fact they're not. And you can understand, obviously, the transmission problem between people in high virus areas. This video we took undercover, which shows you, over a half an hour period, a tray of medicines of 42 vials, which are being delivered with only two syringes in a public hospital in India. And over the course of half an hour, not one syringe was filmed being unwrapped. They started with two and they ended with two. And you'll see just now a nurse coming back to the tray, which is their sort of modular station, and dropping uh, the syringe she's just used back in the tray for it to be picked up and used again. So you can imagine the scale of this problem. And in fact, in India alone, 62% of all injections given are unsafe. These kids in Pakistan don't go to school. They are lucky. They already have a job. And that job is that they go around and pick up syringes from the back of hospitals, wash them, and in the course of this, obviously, picking them up, they injure themselves, and then they repackage them and sell them out on markets for literally more money than a sterile syringe in the first place, which is quite bizarre. And an interesting photo, the, their father, while we were talking to him, picked up a syringe and pricked his finger. I don't know whether you can see the drop of blood on the end. And uh, immediately whipped out a box of matches, lit one, and burnt the blood off the end of his finger giving me full assurance that that was the way that you stopped the transmission of HIV. <laughs> in China, recycling is a major issue, and they're collected en masse. You can see the scale of it here, and uh, sorted out by hand, back into the right sizes, and uh, then put back out on the street. So recycling and reuse are, are the major issues here. But there was one interesting anecdote that I found in Indonesia, in uh, all schools in Indonesia, there's usually a toy seller in the playground. The toy seller, in this case, had syringes, which they usually do next door to the diggers, which is obviously what you would expect. And they use them in the breaks for water pistols. They squirt them at each other, which is lovely and innocent, and they're having great fun. But they also drink from them while they're uh, in their breaks because it's hot, and they squirt the water into their mouths. And these are used with blood, traces of blood in that is, is visible. So we need a better product, and we need better information. And I think if I can just borrow this camera, I was going to show you my invention, which I came up with. Da -da. So uh, it, it's a normal-looking syringe. You load it up in the normal way. This is made on existing uh, equipment in 14 factories that we license. You give the injection and then put it down. If someone then tries to reuse it, it locks and breaks afterwards. It's very, very simple. Thank you. And it costs the same as a normal syringe. And in comparison, a Coca-Cola is 10 times the price. And that will stop reusing a syringe 20 or 30 times. And then I have an information charity which has done a huge scale amount of work in India. And uh, we're very proud of giving information to people so that little kids like this don't do stupid things. Thank you very much. <laughs>
by adding just a touch of platinum, the most noble of metals. Rolex created an exclusive new alloy. We call it Everose Gold. A perfectly blended color of gold that will remain pink forever. Another first in the history of watchmaking, only Rolex could have created an alloy like Everose. People are always looking for what's new. We at Rolex remain committed to what's best.